Workers at the crippled nuclear power plant in Japan's Fukushima prefecture have shut down a key water treatment system for the third time in three months. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say they shut down one of the three lines of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, on Saturday morning. They say they made the decision because the system failed to reduce the calcium level in the water before treatment. Calcium hampers the removal of radioactive substances and has to be eliminated before water treatment. The workers suspect that a faulty filter may have caused the problem. The filter is used to remove calcium and other mineral substances. One of the three lines of the ALP system was shut down in March due to another problem with the filter. It was closed again in April when workers forgot to open a valve used to insert sodium carbonate to eliminate calcium. One of the other two lines of the ALP system has been shut down since March due to the partial loss of a filter that seriously damaged the performance. TEPCO officials initially planned to have all three of the ALPS lines operational by last month. Engineers at Fukushima Daiichi want to stop groundwater from flowing into reactor buildings and getting contaminated. They plan to do that by freezing the ground. They're testing the technique and show the media their experiment. The engineers plan to create a frozen underground wall stretching one and a half kilometers. The barrier would enclose four reactor buildings and keep out the groundwater. Workers are testing the technique on a smaller scale. They sank steel pipes around an area of 10 square meters. The pipes reach 30 meters below ground. Workers filled them with coolant at a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius. A month later, the soil had frozen. I believe we've confirmed that a frozen barrier can block water. The engineers hope to start freezing the ground around the reactor buildings next month. They'll go ahead once they get approval from nuclear regulators. TEPCO had been installing conventional on-site welded tanks. However, handling the increase of the amount of contaminated water is essential. And one of the most important tasks is that TEPCO has to increase the number of the tanks. Therefore, this project is to install factory-made tanks transported by sea to add to the conventional on-site welded tanks. As of April 17, 2014, this is the very first set of factory-made contaminated water storage tanks on the premises of Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station. Supporting this factory-made tank installation project, there was another major project to establish a transportation corridor, which had to be done within a very short period of time, about three months. This other project aimed at transportation of large tanks, preventing contact with any object along the way. It included various work, ranging from road expansion and paving work removal or relocation of power lines and distribution lines, felling of roadside trees, relocation of floodlights and traffic lights, to advanced vehicle travel testing. Fukushima第一の現在の状況、また作業環境等々を踏まえまして、非常にあの困難なプロジェクトだなというところが最初の印象です。今回のプロジェクトを成功させないと、Fukushima第一の安定化にまた廃炉の対策にも進めないということで。
中止されました。強愛な箇所での道路の拡幅工事が非常に困難でした。えー、道路の拡幅をする際にですね、脇には治水バイパスの配管が通っておってですね、そこは夜間工事で、えー、全て対応したんですが、当初想定していた工程よりも遅れていってですね、そこの工程を掴むことが非常に困難になりました。昼間の作業につきましては朝の7時から夕方の3時まで,で夜間につきましては夜の7時から翌朝の3時4時までの2個体制で工事を実施しております This project required the collective efforts of TEPCO and tank manufacturers and the comprehensive employment of their technologies The tanks transported and installed this time was six 700 ton type tanks えー、と今はその二見工場と神戸本工場でそれぞれの工場でおよそあの製作検査員で100名程度の、えー、と人員を投入してですねタンクの製造に乗りかかっております製作しながら走りしながらですね検査のご要求にも一応対応するというところがですね今までにないやり方ということです Completed tanks are being transported by sea to the shallow draft key at the harbor of Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station These tanks are very large with a height of 15.6 meters, a diameter of 8.1 meters, and a weight of 75 tons. The tanks are slowly and carefully unloaded using a 750 ton crawler crane, ensuring the safety of the surrounding environment without stress on the tanks. Tanks are then loaded onto special carriers called super carriers one at a time. Tanks are being transported to the installation site at night so as not to interfere with the decommissioning work at a driving speed as slow as a person walking and installed. 私的にはちょっとハラハラしながら見てた部分はあったんですが、えー、どこも干渉することなく無事に G7 エリアまでスーパーキャリアで輸送できたということが確認できて非常にこのプロジェクトをやってよかったなという思いがあります。We will continue implementing operations in a safe and steady manner with comprehensive employment of technologies. Many people were looking forward to seeing Paul McCartney play two concerts in Tokyo this weekend, but the former Beatle had to cancel the shows because he's ill. McCartney was originally scheduled to perform on Saturday and Sunday. The first gig was called off and rescheduled for Monday. The organizer announced at short notice that the concerts at the National Stadium on Sunday and Monday had been canceled. It says McCartney is recovering from a virus infection. I went to see his first gig in Tokyo 48 years ago. I'm too sad to cry. The organizer says the two remaining shows will go ahead as planned this week. The Hollywood remake of Godzilla has opened in the United States. Godzilla! Ohira Kaju! Hi! A theater at a popular tourist spot was packed on the first day of the film's screening. The release of the second American remake comes 60 years after the original version hit Japanese theaters. The Japanese movies were also released in the US and other countries, becoming a major hit. The new American film is the first 3D version of the series and uses computer graphics. It was a really genius idea to make this story. I, I don't know, it's, it's really beautiful. I enjoyed it. 
A six-metre sculpture of Godzilla is on display in front of the theatre, drawing many people wanting to take photographs. A remote Japanese Pacific island continues to expand because of lava flow from a volcano that began erupting nearly six months ago. An NHK crew took an aerial video of Nishinoshima Island to the far south of Tokyo on Sunday. Columns of smoke are rising from two craters. One of them is spewing lava, cinders and black smoke every few seconds. The first volcanic eruption in 40 years began in the seabed to the southeast of the island on November 20th. In December, a new landmass created by solidified lava merged with the island. The island is now about five times larger than it was before the eruption. Tokyo Institute of Technology professor Kenji Nogami accompanied the crew. He says the lava will continue flowing for a while and the island is likely to keep on expanding. It's unusual for a Japanese volcano to keep releasing lava for six months. I'm very surprised. Nogami says researchers will need to monitor the island and take rock and gas samples to learn more about the volcanic activity. The reputation as a pacifist nation hangs in the balance, with lawmakers there now seeking to foist a new meaning on the country's post-war constitution in a bid to try to restore its military might. After Imperial Japan was defeated in the Second World War, it renounced the threat or the use of force as a means of settling international disputes, calling its military no more than a self-defense force. But now, an historic revision looms as the Japanese Prime Minister argues that his country must be better positioned to deal not only with real but also potential threats in the region. Tokyo also wants more flexibility in being able to come to the aid of its allies. The idea of the country's military taking on a more assertive role in the world caused unease then, both within Japan and abroad, especially in neighbouring China and South Korea. The US, though, supports the idea. Now let's take a look at the map. Japan is surrounded by military bases and also hosts several facilities used by the US Navy. As you can see there, Washington beefing up his presence in the region, which is rife with territorial disputes right now between several countries. And as Joseph Gerson believes, Tokyo's military ambitions are being fueled by the agenda of its American allies. The United States sees uh, Japan as part of a process of encircling, part of a, a foundation for encircling uh, China. Use Japan. Uh, to be what uh, one former prime minister uh, called an unsinkable aircraft carrier for the United States. It's been over for some time. I mean, Japan, despite its constitution saying it should have no, no military forces, uh, it has uh, a very large navy, very large air force. It's the sixth biggest military spender in the world. Uh, but it's been difficult to uh, deploy those forces abroad to, to be involved in, in, in war and uh, both under the pressure of the right wing in Japan and from the United States, there's been a process over more than 30 years now uh, to uh, really overcome the limitations of the Constitution. Amid the turmoil in Ukraine, Russia and China will hold a joint naval drill in the East China Sea next week. Russian President Vladimir Putin will attend an opening ceremony with Chinese President Xi Jinping in a move that's apparently aimed at demonstrating their country's close ties. Putin will begin a two-day visit to Shanghai on Tuesday. He'll hold talks with Xi and attend a summit of 24 countries designed to promote confidence-building measures in Asia. The drill comes amid a standoff over Ukraine between Russia and the US and European nations. Russia and China will then conduct a week-long joint naval exercise in the northern part of the East China Sea. The two countries will dispatch 16 vessels, including two submarines, along with aircraft. The exercise will include simulated attacks, escort of ships, and search and rescue operations. Last month, U.S. President Barack Obama reaffirmed that the Japan-U.S. Security Treaty covers the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. Japan controls the islands. China and Taiwan claim Wakata them. managed to complete his experiments while organizing crews from both the U.S. and Russia. But further, space cooperation between the two nations is now uncertain. NHK World's Yuji Osawa explains.
As part of his mission, Wakata conducted experiments having robot human conversations with Kirobo, the first robot of this type ever brought to space. Kirobo is programmed to process questions and select words from its vocabulary to construct an answer instead of giving pre programmed responses. Scientists hope the technology can be used to heal an astronaut's loneliness while on the International Space Station as well as potential flights to Mars. However, the long-term future of ISS is in doubt. Space cooperation has been a hallmark of U.S.-Russia relations after the Cold War ended. But Russian leaders said on Tuesday that they would reject the U.S. proposal to prolong the $100 billion project for another 10 years. Analysts say Russia's decision is in response to U.S. economic sanctions placed against Russia over the annexing of Crimea in Ukraine. At the moment, we think we'll need the ISS only until 2020. The U.S. has relied on Russian Soyuz capsules to fly to and from the space station since NASA retired its space shuttle fleet in 2011. NASA now pays Russia more than $60 million per person to fly its astronauts on Soyuz capsules. The U.S. government is now reviewing proposals from at least three American firms to develop a commercial space taxi to break the Russian monopoly on crew flight services by 2017.